They only released 12 NES games in 1994. 1994 was the last year that any NES game got that official seal of quality. So in this video, let's check out all 12 games released on the NES in 1994. Bonk's Adventure being one of them, I loved this game on the TurboGrafx-16. Interesting to see this also on the NES. And when it came out for the NES, I was like, really, Bonk? I mean, like, we already have that on the TurboGrafx-16. Why are they releasing it now on the NES? Well, I mean, they did. To collectors by today's standards, I'm sure they're glad they did. And even though the TurboGrafx-16 version is still the optimal version, this one plays extremely well. It's definitely worth checking out. Bonk is one of those mascots that could have released a ton of games by now. There's a few Bonk games out there. This is the first one for the NES. They released a couple of them on the uh, Super Nintendo. Maybe like on Super Nintendo, then Super Famicom as well. It plays great. It plays just fine. It's Bonk's Adventure, and it's on the NES, and it's, uh, it's one to look out for. Chippendale Rescue Rangers 2. That's right, there's a second one. First one was great. They also made a DuckTales 2. That one came out earlier. Uh, this one is Chippendale 2. And unlike DuckTales 2, DuckTales 2, this one plays slightly different than Chippendale Rescue Rangers 1. It plays a lot the same. I mean, it's like it's basically the same. It just feels different. It's just, it feels like it was programmed by someone else. It feels like like the original team couldn't. So they're like, well, hey, let's, let's hire the very best team we can to come up with the same idea. And it is a lot of the same idea. It just doesn't feel the same, if that makes sense. I've always loved the NES games, especially back then, that you're like, you know, smaller than life. You know, so like everything's like super big. <laughs> you know what I mean? And still the same idea where you can pick up the boxes and you can chuck them at your enemies or you can like duck and hide in them and of course if they hit you then you know, that, that counts as taking damage. Some familiar characters along the way too that you'll remember from the cartoon. One of my favorite cartoon series of all time really. Has the kind of fun boss battles as well, you know. And it really is a totally decent game. What this game does have that Chippendale 1 doesn't have is once you're holding a box and walking for a few steps it starts to glow and then that way when you throw it it, uh, it becomes a stronger throw. That's kind of fun. I still prefer the first one. Second one's really good. Alfred Chicken is a registered trademark of Twilight. Now, I'm not exactly sure what Twilight is, uh, but Alfred Chicken, it's okay. I mean, it plays like a, it plays like a game from the UK. It just has that European feel to it. Great animation. Pretty fun game. I mean, it's okay. It doesn't feel like a 1994 NES game. Like, I could have seen this game come out around the same time as a Dash Galaxy in the Alien Asylum. You know, somewhere around that era. Got thunder happening outside. I'm on the fence about this game. What I think of this game in retrospect, I'm like, eh, it's not that great, honestly. But when I play this game, even when I'm capturing my own footage here, I'm like, this is actually a pretty fun game. It's it's actually pretty decent. I wouldn't mind streaming this on Twitch sometime. But then when I look at it in retrospect, I'm like, eh, there's other games out there. But when you play this game, it's actually okay. And I love the animation in this game too, so. Yeah, Alfred Chicken. If you're not familiar, it is an actual NES game that came out. Can't get enough of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, here's Tournament Fighters. Now, Tournament Fighters was released on the Sega Genesis, as well as the Super Nintendo, as well as the NES, and all three games, to the best of my knowledge, they came out, like, at the same time. Like, within a month of each other or something, right? And all three games are 100% completely different games. They're completely different games, all three of them. And all three of them have their own benefits, I suppose. And this is the best you could do for an NES game. You know, there's a story mode, there's a versus mode, not a whole lot of characters to choose from, and not a whole lot of special abilities to choose from. What I thought was interesting was, like, halfway through the stage, or halfway through the battle, uh, they would drop, like, this kind of dodgeball <laughs> that you can use to chuck at your enemies. You know, in lieu of throwing a fireball or something like that, you just chuck some elementary school <laughs> ball at them, I guess. Of the three TMNT Tournament Fighter games, uh, this one here is probably my least favorite, but it's definitely the most collectible. And if you're a TMNT fan, eh, I might, you know, check it out sometime. Mega Man 6 could never get enough of the Mega Man games. It was nice because the Mega Man games didn't seem to ever lose their stride. Sometimes when there's like, oh, hey, let's just keep on pumping out new games just to make more money. People, people are going to buy whatever you put on it. The Mega Man games have always been pretty consistent with how great the games were. This was a fun idea too. This was during that time where people would actually submit their idea for robot bosses and it would become an actual robot boss in the game. What a great idea. I wish Mega Man would go back to doing this. I would, I would love it. I'd love it if they could. Capcom, can you make that happen please? I'd appreciate it. Interesting to note that this Mega Man game, Mega Man 6, was actually published by Nintendo. Now it's still made by Capcom and everything, but we can look on those lists. It was a Nintendo published game. I just thought it was kind of interesting. And aside from that, 
it's just a Mega Man game through and through. Everybody has their favorite games, whether it's Mega Man 2, Mega Man 4, whatever it is. Mega Man 6 to me falls right in the middle of the Mega Man games of like, you know, where I would rank them, like 1 through 6. Right in the middle. Uh, th this totally decent, totally worth playing. Love this one. Mickey's Adventures in Numberland. People are like, oh, wait a minute. You know, people have NES systems. You know, the, the, the kids who grew up with them are now dads and they have kids and they want to pass some games along to their kids or whatever. Well, they made a few edutainment style games. I don't know. Was it a trend for a while? I remember CDI did this for a little bit. Uh, CDI was like the edutainment system, really. And there are a few kind of educational games for the NES. And this one is not great. Uh, not that it's not great to teach your kids numbers. It's just the play control is weird. I mean, it's actually a difficult game to control for me, let alone a child trying to play this game and trying to, you know, get all the numbers as far as this one goes, too. There are two Mickey Mouse adventures in games. There's uh, This is Numberland. Uh, earlier they released uh, Letterland. Yeah, sure. All right. Star Tropics 2 Zoda's Revenge kind of fell under the radar for a lot of people. You gotta remember, this is 1994. This is the year that we had Donkey Kong Country, Final Fantasy three or you know Final Fantasy six you know in reality uh, Earthbound Super Metroid these all these games came out in 1994 and then we have this great NES game in Star Tropics two that could have been maybe should have been a Super Nintendo game would have got a lot more draw we may have had more Star Tropics games today had they put this on the Super Nintendo, but it just kind of fell by the wayside. I don't know. And uh, unfortunately, through my mister, this game is not working correctly. But you gotta try, <laughs> take my word on it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna steal someone else's footage. It's an awesome game and 100% worth it. Love this game. Chronologically, then we get Mario's Time Machine. It's another edutainment style game. You're not going to die as Mario. I remember first playing this at a kiosk in Blockbuster Video of all places. I was like, oh, they're still making Nintendo games. Interesting. I played this for like a couple of seconds. So I was like, ooh, that effect looks kind of fun. Which they had that was in their earlier Nintendo games. Curious game, because like you get your item and that item represents a year. You have to go to the correct year to use whatever item you found. And that's the point of the whole game. And of course in each world, if you don't if you if you don't go to the right world, that's fine. You can go back and you know try again later. But getting the clues in those worlds, it'll tell you what items you need to uh, bring back. And if you don't, just keep trying until, until you get it right. You get an educational style game in Mario's Time Machine. Uh, they had one for the Super Nintendo as well. The Super Nintendo one plays a little bit different. And this is the uh, NES one. The Jungle Book got another Disney game in The Jungle Book. Uh, in 94, did The Jungle Book come back out on VHS, I think, during this time? Back when they had the whole Disney vault thing. Well, they made Jungle Book for a few different consoles as well, and the NES one actually has some great animation, and it plays very well too. Big fan of The Jungle Book for the Nintendo Entrotainment System. It just plays like a great game. Uh, it's one of those games I wish it would have come out a little bit earlier, so I could have enjoyed it more because again during this time given the option oh Jungle Book do I want to play Jungle Book sure what am I going to play it on well it's not going to be on NES I'll grab the Super Nintendo version I'll grab the Genesis version why would I play the NES version well I did it took me a couple years to get to it but I finally did yeah it plays fine oh the Flintstones the surprise at Dinosaur Peak if we could all go back in time <laughs> and pick up two copies of any game uh, this one may be at the top of the list most people know this game today by today's standards as being one of the most uh, valuable NES game. One of the most, for a while there, it was the most valuable, as far as not stadium events. Pretty sure Little Samson goes for more than this does now, but for a while, this was the game. So most people know this game because of its value. I know this game because it's an actually fun game. It's actually a really, really good game, and it's definitely worth checking out, even through emulation, whatever, however you need to play these games, trust me, play this game. There's two of them as well. I mean, the other Flintstones games was really good too. This one's really fun. You can also uh, select between characters like on the fly too. So, uh, you know, you have someone like Fred who can climb up things and then there's Barney who can, you know, go up the, uh, the, the pipes and stuff like that. I didn't show footage of that in this video. You know, Fred has the club, Barney has the uh, slingshot. Not an easy game to find by today's standards, but you have lots of ways to play this game and it might be worth looking at for you. One of the late release NES games that you can afford it's the Incredible Crash Dummies. My goodness, all right. Okay, I get it. Somebody doesn't like LJN. Anyway, uh, not great. Not great. There's a couple of Crash Dummy games. Uh, the, the one for the Super Nintendo also plays completely different than this one. What a great marketing ploy for just a simple like don't re don't forget to buckle your seatbelt campaign they took an, they took a PSA ad campaign and they marketed it so well to a great degree i wish they would do things like this today 
I mean, the whole idea of the Incredible Crash Dummies was they were crash dummies that were encouraging you to buckle your seatbelt. It would be like if they made a Got Milk video game that was all about drinking your milk. But instead, we got the Incredible Crash Dummies. The NES one, it's it's not the worst game in the world. And it's actually what, probably one of the better LJN games. Ah, but it's still pretty rough. It's, <laughs> it's, it's still a little difficult. I mean, I, I just you know, play, play wise and stuff. Wario's Woods 1994, my goodness. Now this is another one of those games that also came out for the Super Nintendo. Did it come out for Game Boy? I think it did. And it came out for the NES and the NES version plays very well once you know how to play this game. It's a match three so long as one of those three is a bomb. But you can create a whole string of these things to blow up and bomb and go from there. I like this game because it features some of the other characters. Now this is, is it the first NES game that has Wario in it? I think so. You have Birdo up in the corner bringing Birdo back from our, our favorite Mario 2 game. And then you kind of play as Toad. And it was a, you know, this was way before uh, Captain Toad and all that. So fun that they would utilize just some of the other Mario characters that isn't Yoshi, that isn't Mario, that isn't Luigi. Yeah, bring some of those other uh, characters to light here. And it's a pretty decent puzzle game. I wouldn't mind if they made a new puzzle game like this. I mean, the, there's always lots of ideas for puzzle games, and this one's pretty fun. Once you know how to play it, it's a little confusing at first, but once you figure it out, you know, how to climb up the things and all that, I, you'll be all right. You probably already knew this. Wario's Woods was the final game released by Nintendo for the NES. But as a bonus, we have Trolls on Treasure Island, according to this list, even though it says 92. According to the list, it said that this game was released in 1994, officially. Okay. Uh, there's another game for the NES called Dudes with Attitudes. That's basically the same style of game. And it's just, I don't know, you just, you, you go in the little buckets to churn into that color, and once you're that color, you can collect that coin, or that, those, those treasures. <laughs> Treasure Trolls make a resurgence about every 15 to 20 years, and they become popular again. And this is during the time, this is during that time, and then of course it came out later when you got the Trolls movie. Yeah, so give it another 10 years or so, I bet you will see Treasure Trolls back on the uh, back on store shelves and all that. Now we called these games unlicensed games. Uh, however, by today's standards, we call them homebrews, we call them indie games. There are still people making new NES games today in 2023, including Mr. One, six foot five, Mr. Awesome, John Riggs here. Like, yeah, yeah, Beavis 2. Gleamy the Cube. Look at that handsome label with Cereal Cafe, back when I had longer hair. These and more games coming out soon. I have a link in my description if you wanna purchase one of these. I will send it straight to you or find me at a convention sometime and I'll have these on hand. Not a whole lot of games for 94, but 1988, they made so many great NES games. So check out the 1988 video just for a few of the games that came out for the NES in 1988. And check out the other videos as well. I've done these year-by-year -year things on multiple consoles as well, too.